This is a story about my friends. There's Meg, who's had the chicken pox twice. There's Sam, the former professional poker player. And then there's Stu, the marine biologist with the hairiest feet I've ever seen in my life. Together, these three friends of mine decided to run a race. 26.2 miles for Stu and 13.1 miles for Meg and Sam. They did this to beat the blurch, but I'll get to that later. For now, Meg and I had to get from Spokane to Seattle. All right, we are en route to we're going, Seattle. We're going. How are you feeling, Megs? I'm feeling pretty great. Uh, feeling ready for battle. So about the blurch. The concept of the blurch came from this book right here. The book is called The Terrible and Wonderful Reasons Why I Run Long Distances. It's an awesome book. And hey, it's written by the guy who writes the oatmeal. Nice. So on page 10 of the book, like barely getting into it, he addresses the concept of the wall. And I think anyone who's been in sports or like endurance related things knows about the wall. You just hit a wall. He says that he doesn't believe in the wall. He believes in the blurch. And the blurch is a fat little cherub who follows him around when he runs. A fat little cherub. He tells me to slow down. He tells me to walk. He tells me to quit. He runs to beat the blurch. And that's what this entire race is based on. This guy wrote this book and it got such a cult following that he decided to make an actual race. And I mean, there are aid stations with couches and cake and like people dressed up as the blurch trying to tempt you to like take a seat and take a break. It's crazy. So now you know. Taking some antibiotics, preparing to run a half marathon with an ear infection. It'll be okay. <laughs> Oh, I woke up with cold sweats like three times. I just sleep. It's actually, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely take it. Yeah. All right, so I'll see y'all on the other side. That would be about two hours. So yeah. If it's two and a half. Yeah, you are with your training. Like you are fully capable of a sub two hour. I'm ready, right? You're ready. <laughs> right, guys. Right. They say running a marathon is a test. It's a mental test. Three, two, one, go! Have a great day! We're gonna try and find them halfway along the forest and cheer them on. We're gonna flank them. We can't flank them. Three miles in, running through this beautiful forest. So, we're gonna go to the beer garden. We're gonna plan a great spot to receive them at. Is that the right word? Receive them? Reception. Sure. Just passed my first aid station, meaning I just passed my first couch. <laughs> it's way too early for that. Which one are you guys doing? Uh, we are 10K. Mantis Shrimp. Oh, we're doing the 10K. Yeah. Magic Shrimp? Mantis Shrimp. You want a grilled donut? Coming up on the halfway point. I really do. Feeling great. These woods are gorgeous. I've got gummy bears for them. Do you guys see that guy in the red shirt up there? That's Sam. He's killing it. Hey, Sam! Oh, yeah. I can't get it. I'm not tall enough. So, as you can see, Stu's been running for two hours and 17 minutes. 
two, two hours and 18 minutes. Yep. Stay on top of it. Sorry. And then uh, the halfers, hour and two minutes. We walked for maybe three quarters of a mile. At least just passed one of my favorite people, Sam Sparaza. Got uh, probably one of the best high fives in my whole entire life. See that back there, back home? That was halfway. Should do this again. I can do that. Sam Sparaza, half marathoner. Making the way. Oh my god, how was it? So good. Oh, my shirt is Jonathan Niggard and Jimmy Are we doing? We're good. Okay. Look who we found. Good nice job, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah. How'd it go? Yes, it was. Yeah. Good job. It's a good day. That's awesome. It's a good day. I started late again. Chipotle in our future? Absolutely. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. 